Another one of the fundamental questions of life is, where did I come from? And what I have tried to do in the first couple of videos in this series is to show that these fundamental questions of life, they, they do have answers. They all have answers. But the answers have different levels. There are different levels of answers. And the levels depend on people's state of consciousness, what you are able and willing to accept, how attached you are to your present worldview, your present way of looking at life. Many people are very attached to a particular view of life, and they will not consider any answer to these fundamental questions that goes beyond that view. So let's start uh, at the basic level, at the lowest level. There are some people that are very focused on the physical body, very identified with the physical body. So for them, the only answer they can accept to the question of where did I come from is, I came from the body. I'm a product of the physical body. In other words, when my brain reached a certain level of development, whether this happened in the womb or after you were born, that's when you appear, because the body, uh, body or the mind is what produces the sense that you are a person that exists, and that you can think and you have, you have an identity, basically. So this is what materialists are saying. Scientific materialists are saying that your mind is a product of the brain. The physical processes in the brain produces the mind. They can't explain how. They don't even have a theory of how a particular brain activity produces a particular uh, conscious experience. But nevertheless, despite the fact that they don't have a theory and they don't have evidence, this is what they claim. So if you're very identified with the body, this might be the only answer you're open to. You know, where did I come from? I came from the brain. And when the brain dies, I'm going to disappear as if I never existed. Now, many people, of course, don't find this satisfying. It just isn't a good enough answer. So, the next level up that we can see is what we see in many religions. For example, Christianity. You are not the physical body. You are a soul inhabiting the physical body. Uh, this is found in many other religions as well. So, this opens you to a little higher explanation of where you came from, because obviously you must have come from some, somewhere beyond the body. In Christianity, for example, it's said that God created the soul. God created you as a soul. What they find difficult to explain is that they also say that God created you as an imperfect soul, as a sinner. So, God, who is supposedly all good, and all-powerful, decided to create you as a soul, but for reasons that Christianity can't explain, he decided to create you as an imperfect soul, as a sinner. And you need to be saved, and if you are not saved, you'll go to hell, and you will burn and suffer for all eternity in hell. So, why a good God would create you as a sinner that has the risk of going to hell, Christianity can't explain. But of course, in today's world, many people have come to a point where they say, well, that just doesn't make sense to me. That's not a good enough answer. I cannot accept that answer. There must be more to understand than this. Okay, so if you're open to this, we can go to another level. And what happens to many people when they start questioning both the materialist paradigm and the uh, Christian, uh, Christian paradigm is that they become open to the fact that if we are more than the body, if we are a soul that existed before the body, then perhaps that soul did not come into existence just to live in this physical body in one lifetime. This is what Christianity says. Your soul was created, maybe at the time of the conception of your physical body, but if before, then not very long before. And your soul was created to take embodiment in this body, in this one lifetime, and you have one shot at either securing salvation, where you go to heaven, or damnation, where you go to hell for all eternity. So, it's really all or nothing in this lifetime, according to Christianity. Well, many people who are more open to different answers, they become open to the fact that perhaps your body wasn't created just for this one lifetime. I mean, perhaps your soul wasn't created just for this one lifetime. 
Perhaps your soul was created long before this physical body. And perhaps your soul has taken embodiment in other physical bodies before this one. And this opens us up to a, an idea that's actually believed by approximately two-thirds of the world's population, and that is the idea of reincarnation. Namely, that you are a soul that existed long before this body and will exist after this body dies. So what that gives us is that it gives us a much broader uh, opportunity to answer the question, where did I come from? Because you now see that you could actually have had quite a long history of being an embodiment on this planet. So you could have had many experiences previous to this lifetime. Which means that when you came into this lifetime, when you were born, when your soul entered this physical body, you didn't come in on a blank slate. This is what material is called a tabula rasa. In other words, a blank slate. Your, your mind was blank when you were born. And everything that you are, everything that you think, came into being as you were growing up. Some of it may have been conditioning based on your genetic programming from your parents and your family, but you started out with nothing, is what some materialists say. So when you realize uh, the reality of reincarnation, you realize that you didn't come in with nothing, you didn't come in on a blank slate, you came uh, in with a psychology that was based on the experiences you had in past lifetimes. And for some people this will seem not important at all, but for people who have gone started going into being more open to deeper answers, it'll be very important. I talked in previous videos in the series about the Pyramid of Needs, based on Ibrahim Maslow, the American psychologist, and the lower needs are the physiological, safety and security, love and belonging, esteem, but the highest need at the top of the pyramid is the self-actualization needs. And when you go into this self-actualization, it becomes very important to realize that you have a long and complicated history. Because what is self-actualization about? It's about, yeah, actualizing yourself. What does that mean? It means two things. It means, first of all, discovering and unlocking your real potential. In other words, most people, what we call normal human beings, have only realized a very small percentage of the total potential that we have as human beings. We have many abilities that most people have not realized. So self-actualization is about discovering and unlocking those abilities. The other thing is that what is preventing us from uh, using these abilities that we have is that we have these mechanisms in our psychology, in our subconscious mind. In some of my breakthrough videos, I call these subconscious selves. In other words, we have created certain subconscious selves that are like programs in a computer. In other words, if we experience a certain situation, it triggers one of these subconscious selves and they take over. One example I give is that you have created a program for riding a bicycle. You may not ride a bicycle for 20 years, but if you get on a bicycle, this program is activated and you can hold the balance on a bicycle without having to relearn it. And it's uh, the same thing with many psychological mechanisms. We created, let's say we were bullied when we were five years old. You created a certain subconscious self to deal with a bully. Now, if you are an adult and you are bullied by somebody in the workplace, that situation triggers that self you created when you were five. The problem is, when you were five, you had limited options for dealing with a bully. You have many more options today, when you are an adult. But if you are allowing that subconscious self to take over your reactions, you are essentially, even though you are an adult, you are reacting to the situation as a five-year-old, with the maturity of a five-year-old. So, the two aspects of self-actualization is that we come to see these limited uh, structures, these cells we have in a subconscious mind, we go through a process of overcoming them. There are many ways of doing this, as I explained in the breakthrough videos. And as we overcome these limitations, we unlock the higher potential that we have. It automatically becomes unlocked because it's, it's just blocked by these hindrances in the subconscious mind. So when you start this process of self-actualization, it's very important to realize 
that you didn't just create your personal psychology in this lifetime. Many people can look back and they can say they had a difficult childhood. But many people also look back and say they didn't have a particular uh, child, a difficult childhood. They weren't exposed to any major trauma. But when you start looking into your psychology, you might discover a major trauma. And the logical explanation for this is you received that trauma in a past life by dealing with a very difficult situation. Just look at the history of this planet. Could you have been a soldier in World War II, for example, who were killed? Could you have been a civilian whose house was bombed? Could you have been in any other number of wars and conflicts where you received trauma? So a very important aspect of considering where did I come from is that if I have had many embodiments on this planet, I could have been exposed to major trauma. And this means that I need to uh, make an effort to heal this trauma if I want to unlock my higher potential. So, what is the basis for doing this? Well, as I explained in the previous videos, there is a core of your being that is what I have called pure awareness. We can also call it the conscious self or the conscious you. So when you start going into self-actualization, you start realizing, okay, I have a soul vehicle. I have, as I have talked about before, these three higher bodies, the emotional body, the mental body, the identity body. In each of these levels of the mind, I have created these structures, these selves, these reactionary patterns. And this is the soul vehicle that I take with me from lifetime to lifetime. But this soul vehicle is made up of these selves that are meant to give me certain experiences and to also help me to react to certain situations. And the way to unlock my potential is to start looking at the contents of my soul vehicle and saying, is this really the life experience that, want to, that I want to continue to have? Or do I want to change my life experience by overcoming these selves? And the way to overcome the selves, as I also explain in more detail in my breakthrough videos, is that you realize that you are not the self. It's kind of a step further than realizing I'm not the body. You start realizing I am not a particular self. So let's say you were bullied when you were five years old. You have a self that causes you to react to bullies by wanting to withdraw, feeling powerless. You can come to realize, yes, I created that self in reaction to a specific situation, but I did not become the self. So who am I? Well, the core of your being is this conscious you, this conscious self. And the conscious self is, as I've said, pure awareness. It's neutral. It, it can go into a self and experience the world through that self, but at any moment when the conscious you becomes aware, it can step outside of that self again. This is what I said in the previous video. We can have a, an immersion experience when we are experiencing, but we are not really conscious. And then we can become aware that we are experiencing. We can step back from the experience and we can say, is this the only way I can experience life? And then you realize that your particular experience of life is coming from a subconscious self, but you are not that self. You did not become that self when you created it. So that means you can step outside of it. You can come to see that the self is based on an illusion. You could come to see it limit you, and you can let it go. You can let it die. You're not trying to solve the problem that the self is projecting. You're just letting the self die. That's what I explain in more detail in my breakthrough videos. So <clears throat> the importance of this is that when you stop identifying yourself with these cells that you have in the soul vehicle, you realize I'm not actually even the soul vehicle. The soul is something I have created in order to interact with the physical body and with the physical world. But I'm more than this. I'm more than the body. I'm even more than the soul. I'm more than this, even this outer personality. And when you uh, come to that realization, you can start having these intuitive experiences where you feel connected to something beyond yourself, beyond your own mind. I also describe this in my How the World Works videos where I talk about we have gone into this uh, illusion that we are separate beings. We have come to see ourselves as separate beings, but we can recapture our intuitive sense that we are connected to something outside our own minds. 
And what can ca recapture this sense of connectedness is not these separate selves, but the conscious you, the conscious self. Because what you can come to experience directly is that you are connected to something outside your lower mind, outside your soul vehicle. And that something is what we can call your higher self. And the higher self, I've explained in some of the other videos, it exists in a realm of higher vibrations. It's beyond the material world. As I explained, the material world has four levels, the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the identity. But beyond that is the level of higher vibrations, higher energies. That's where your higher self resides. So where did you come from? Well, when you it depends on how you see the you. What is the you? If you think the body is you, then okay, that's a one level of answer. If you think the soul is you, that's another level of answer. But what I'm saying is you can come to this realization that who you really are is this conscious you, this conscious self. And that conscious self is actually an extension of your higher self. The higher self that exists in a higher realm. This is what millions of mystics have realized throughout the ages. There's nothing new, there's nothing hocus pocus about what I'm telling you here. Mystics going back for thousands of years have come to this experience, an intuitive experience. I'm more than the body, I'm more than the soul, I'm more than the outer personality. I am pure awareness, but I am connected to something. In fact, I, you can attain a sense of oneness with your higher self. You realize you are an extension of the higher self. So in other words, the higher self exists in the spiritual realm. The higher self decides I want to experience what it is like to be in the physical world. But the higher self cannot, in its totality, descend into a physical body on a planet like Earth. And one of the reasons for this is that uh, the higher self, it doesn't want to get lost. It doesn't want to get lost in the physical world. So in order to experience the physical world and help co-create the physical world, the higher self sends an extension of itself, which is what I call the conscious self. And this conscious self then creates these soul, the soul vehicle, the identity mind, the mental mind, the emotional mind. And these three minds can then integrate with a physical body. They can, so to speak, enter into a physical body and experience life and do something through a physical body. When the physical body dies, the emotional, mental, and identity minds are again separated from the physical body. And then they can, after some time, descend into another physical body. And you can have many lifetimes that way. Because in reality, what we can say is, your higher self has a purpose for wanting to send the conscious you into the physical world. And the higher self wants to have certain experiences, but the higher self also wants to do something, which I'll return to in just a minute. And so the question is, can what the purpose that the higher self has, can that be fulfilled in just one lifetime? A lifetime, you know, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years? Or what if you uh, descend into embodiment, you die in childhood, or you die before you're born? How is that going to fulfill the purpose that the higher self has for wanting to do something and experience something in the physical world. So that's why the only really logical explanation here is reincarnation, where you, over many, many lifetimes, you can have a sufficient number of experiences that fulfills the purpose that the higher self had. Now, so what is the purpose that the higher self has? Well, I have explained, in, especially in the first video in the uh, How the World Works series, it's called How the World Was Created. I explain that um, the ultimate driving force behind the creation of the universe is the expansion of consciousness. And I have explained that ultimately there is one being called the Creator who started the entire process of creating this world. But the Creator has not personally, directly created every aspect of our world. I explained that there were previous spheres that existed before ours 
So there's a whole layered creation that reaches from the Creator to our level. We are quite far removed in consciousness from the Creator and in vibration. The vibration of the material world that we live in is quite far removed from the uh, Creator's con uh, consciousness and vibration. So the purpose for doing this was that the Creator, out of its own being, out of its own mind, creates these, these self-aware extensions of itself. And your higher self is one such extension. It's not one of the first, there are, as I said, layers of these you know, levels of self-aware beings. But we are in the latest uh, part of this process. And so your I Am Presence or your Higher Self was created as an extension of the Creator's being, the One Mind, because there really is only one mind. But your uh, Higher Self wasn't created directly by the Creator, it was created by the Ascended Masters that exist in the realm right about ours. So they're, they're, we are in a certain level, there's a realm, realm of vibrations above us, and then there's several others before you reach the Creator. So in the realm above ours are some beings that I call Ascended Masters. They created the physical world, they created planet Earth to give us a structure that where we can grow, we can experience. So these Ascended Masters, some of them, created your particular Higher Self with the individuality, a unique individuality that you have. So ultimately where you came from, if we say you as the being and embodiment, you are the conscious you. And ultimately you came out of your Higher Self, but the Higher Self came out of the beings of Ascended Masters, and they came out of a higher level of Ascended Beings that reaches all the way to the Creator. So this is the ultimate explanation of where you came from. You are literally an extension of the Creator's being, but not directly. Uh, you are an extension, first of all, of the Ascended Masters in the realm right above ours, which you might call the spiritual realm or the Ascended realm, or the realm of higher awareness. And then they created your uh, Higher Self, but your Higher Self wasn't created as an Ascended Being. Your Higher Self was created to take embodiment or send a part of itself in to take embodiment in this physical wor world that we live in, not just on planet Earth, could be many other planets, but you were created to take embodiment and as a result of being an embodiment over many lifetimes, you could raise your sense of awareness, you could raise your consciousness until your higher self can ascend and become an ascended being. So this is the purpose. This is ultimately where you came from. And therefore we can say that uh, right now uh, you, really, you really came here to experiment with your co-creative abilities, what you can do on Earth. And you co-create through the four levels that you have, the identity, the mental, the emotional, and the physical. So you co-create by formulating an image at the identity level, pushing it into the mental level where it becomes more concrete, more fleshed out. We can say, if we want to compare it to something, we can say that at the identity level, you form the desire and the will to build a house. At the mental level, you make the blueprint, the plans for how the, plan is going, the house is going to be built. Then you push it into the emotional, which gives you the drive to put it into action, and then that pushes it into the physical, where you now start taking the physical actions that are necessary to build a house. And this is how we co-create everything else. And so this is one uh, purpose for being here, is that we co-create, but also we have experiences. We experience the consequences we are, of our co-creation, how it affects ourselves, how it affects the whole. We experience other people. We experience the physical realm and how it works. And you may say, well, that's a pretty... Uh, unpleasant experience that I'm having here, why would I choose to do this? Well, you have to realize that the conscious you is experiencing the world through these uh, subconscious selves that you have created in past lifetimes. But your higher self is not experiencing your life through those subconscious selves. It's experiencing your life directly from the ascended realm. So it has a different experience. 
the higher self has a positive experience no matter what you are going through down here. And you may say, well, that's pretty cruel, but is it really? You see, the conscious you doesn't have to experience life the way you're experiencing it right now. The conscious you is only experiencing life the way you are because it's seeing it through these subconscious selves. And the whole process that I've described in my breakthrough videos and my other videos is that we can engage in a systematic path whereby we free ourselves from these subconscious selves and thereby we raise our life experience. You can literally come to a point where the conscious you experiences life the way your higher self experiences life, because you no longer have these subconscious selves. And then I can assure you that life on Earth is not a negative experience. It's not a struggle experience. And so this is the potential we have to come to a point where we experience life the way our higher selves does, and we also now become an open door whereby the higher self can express itself through us. And that means we can manifest things that most people would consider impossible. We can manifest a life that most people would consider impossible because these subconscious selves not only color your experience of life, they also form kind of a block for what your higher self can express through you. So as you remove those blocks, the power, the vision of the higher self can flow through your identity body, or identity mind, your mental and emotional mind, and into the physical. And that is a totally different life experience than most people are having right now. So obviously what I'm saying here is that when you really realize where you came from, your perspective on life changes dramatically. And that means you can then also get a different perspective on the next one of these fundamental questions, namely, where am I going? So we'll consider that in a separate discussion.